Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of How I Teach with language arts lady, Donna Reish. I'm excited today to bring you a two-part episode. And so let's just start right off with housekeeping. I am your host, Des, your teacher, and um, the owner of Language Arts Lady blog, as well as Language Arts Lady store and Teachers Pay Teachers Language Arts Lady store, um, as well as some other things as well that you'll see as we go through here. So I want to begin with the housekeeping of the infamous teacher's notebook sheet. So this uh, screen is showing right now the teacher's notebook um, cover for this episode. And this is, the episode is the color-coded checklist challenge for revising papers from third grade on. And it is part one of two. And I did another episode about the checklist challenge, which was episode nine. And it is a, it is a one part episode. And this one, however, um, is, I'm gonna start it at an earlier grade and I'm going to, uh, do a lot more with the color coded part. So that is the part that allows you to be able to grade your students revisions easily via the checklist challenge. This came from a book, uh, a downloadable product called Write for a Month Tools and Tricks Level 2. There are five, of, five levels of all Write for a Month books and the tools and tricks. There are five books of those and they each teach First of all, how to do a sentence by sentence outlining every step per one step per page. And then they teach how to do this checklist challenge. And the lesson that you're actually getting in your teacher's notebook today is from Tools and Tricks Level 2. And it is half of the checklist challenge um, from that how to lesson. And then part two is the second part of that. So the teacher's notebook is a downloadable freebie that you get with every episode. So you can see that it has um, half of the entire lesson from this book, Tools and Tricks, projects three and four, how to complete the checklist challenge over the elves and the shoemaker story. And so um, if you have your video on and you are watching it at YouTube or at my blog, you see how I'm scrolling through the teacher's notebook. If you are watching, listening to it via uh, your favorite podcast app, you'll wanna get this teacher's notebook and have it in front of you. And that way you can follow along. So I'm gonna go back to the back here and show you that uh, you can subscribe to get the teacher's notebook every single week, the episode sheet, um, or you can get all um, 17 of the episode sheets, which means 17 free lessons um, to use with your students um, at languageartsladyblog.com forward slash teacher's notebook. So two ways to get it. You can get the episode at forward slash how I teach, and you can get all 17 of them so far um, at the teacher's forward slash teacher's notebook. So without further ado, I'm going to move on over to the PowerPoint and start in with this lesson. So here we go. Uh, the checklist challenge is a challenging checklist of revision items. So what that means is that you have a chart that the student uses to put changes into their papers, whether they're essays, um, research papers, or stories. They use this chart that you will get in its in, uh, half of it this week and half of it next week. Um, they use this chart to revise. And it has many of the grammar and usage skills that I teach in my books and that students at various grade levels should be able to complete. They should know what a verb is. They should know um, how to use a coordinating conjunction, for example, in fifth grade or whatever that might be. And if not, as you'll see, there are samples and just a lot of helps all throughout the checklist challenge chart. So <clears throat> we're gonna start in right here. And this, as I said, is from Tools and Tricks level two. And uh, there are 40 total, uh, right for a month, downloadable one month writing books. 
at Teachers Pay Teachers. They're actually not all up as of the middle of June here, but we are working on getting them all up. So you can check back frequently to see what's there. Um, but this is from third grade on. So this comes from Tools and Tricks Level 2, which is actually a fourth and fifth grade book. Um, but you, I'm going to, of course, tell you how to use it for lower grades and also how to um, tweak it for upper grades as well, just like I do in every episode. So the first thing that you're always going to find, and if you have your teacher's notebook in front of you and you are uh, following along um, with the audio, I am on the overview of checklist challenge lesson. So remember the uh, PowerPoint is um, landscape and the teacher's notebook is portrait. So it actually takes two slides to have the information that uh, is in your teacher's notebook. So go to the overview of checklist challenge lesson in your teacher's notebook. All right, so I always have an overview with each writing project in my books. And I talked about this a lot in previous episodes about how we want to give expectation explanations to our students at all times. We always want them to know what is expected of them. And this is how I do that in my projects. You can use something this elaborate or you can use a simple you know, little code on the uh, board telling them this week's project has X amount of paragraphs, it has X amount of quotes, whatever it, whatever your expectations are for that project. And I'll just give you a quick reminder here, don't have any expectations in writing that you have not taught them how to do. All right, we don't want to frustrate them. All right, so this is going to be uh, how to complete the checklist challenge. The checklist challenge comes in the back of 95% of my writing projects. So it's literally in every writing book, how to complete it step-by-step, step, each task laid out in a, in a lesson, um, in a mini lesson is in the tools and tricks books. And it's also in many of the meaningful composition books. So every project, 95% of them has, have the checklist challenge with each writing project. But how to do the checklist challenge is specifically in the tools and tricks. And that's what we're gonna look at here today. So we're going to do a how to complete the checklist challenge. We're gonna do it over three paragraphs and um, you will not do it on an opening. You will not do it on a closing. It's very simplified at this level. So we're just going to have a three paragraph project that they complete the checklist challenge on. So uh, this is just some information for the teacher, um, you know, as well as for the student, but telling them that writing is half of the process and the other half of the writing process is revising. And the problem with most revision type of processes is that students do not, they're, they're too vague. They're like, okay, well, add some openers. Okay, change some of your verbs. All right, now I want you to go in and, and edit. I want you to go in and revise. And uh, students do not intuitively know how to do that, right? We have to teach them all of these skills. And that is where the checklist challenge really shines above all other revision programs that I've ever seen because it is a step-by-step -step program. So the first uh, assignment that the student is given in this lesson is there with the bold fonted diamond. And those are the ones that show you the assignments, a, a diamond and a number and, um, and a um, bold fonted uh, wording there. So it says study the sample checklist challenge and the sample uh, essay provided. So I'm gonna flip back to that, which is at the back of this. I want you to see this ahead of time. So here's the checklist challenge chart. All right. And it has all of the tasks that were done to the sample. Okay. And you can see how um, if you print it in color, if you didn't print it in color, you won't be able to see the different marks, but uh, the different color coding. So check boxes, then circled in purple, and then highlighted in pink, and then circled in green and then underlined in blue, and then circled in purple, 
and underlined in purple, underlined in pink, colored in green, circled in blue, and so forth. All right, so that is the color coding. And the reason that I wanna teach you the color coding is because if you start using the color coding uh, method from the beginning, your very first checklist challenge by using one of the tools and tricks books or by using the lesson that's provided for free for you and this uh, teacher, um, how I teach, you will always be able to grade very easily, very thoroughly. And so the, one of the first things I do with all of my students, um, I teach 50 to 60 students writing um, either through my uh, through private lessons or through my classes locally or online uh, with co-ops and individual families and so forth. And the, one of the first things that we do is go through one of these tools and tricks book. So we learn how to do the sentence by sentence outline step by step. And we learn how to do the checklist challenge step by step. And then, and how to code the checklist challenge. And then every week when these 50 and 60 essays and reports and stories come in, my graders know to just put the uh, checklist challenge chart on, the, on their dominant side and the student essay or report or story on their left side or their non-dominant side and just go through and grade because they can find all of the revisions because they are color coded. Let me show you the color coded sheet. So here is a color coded essay and it is the uh, Shoemaker and the Elves. And you can see how my writing assistant Zach has gone through here and made all of the changes that are laid out in this checklist challenge chart. And he has coded each change in a color-coded manner so that the grader can find them easily. It's not just good for the grader, but when you have 50 or 60 students, you, you can't spend 30 to 60 minutes on each essay or each report, each story. And so, you know, my grader might spend 15 minutes on a longer paper, 10 minutes on a shorter one like this, cross-checking, do you have all of the tasks completed? And I have a training how to grade the checklist challenge also at the blog, if you're interested in that. So this is what the paper is going to look like at the end of the checklist challenge. And it is a thing of beauty. We call this our colorful paper. So this is the paper that they've already typed up or in this case, they can use the one that's given to them. And they have done the checklist challenge to it step-by-step step, and they coded the checklist challenge. Now it might look like a very long and laborious product, project to you right now. And you might think my student would never do that. He or she would never be able to do that. My kids, if you're a, te a classroom teacher or co-op teacher, my kids would never be able to do all of that to their paper. And um, I'm here to tell you that every year, 50 students at least learn how to do this and learn how to do this coding and do it from then on, right? And it is because of students rising to the expectations. Whatever is expected of them and whatever is taught to them, hopefully in an incremental, very um, non-vague way, they will rise to do. So they have seen students at first, the new students don't have to do every single task. The returning students do have to do every single task. So they have seen these returning students as colorful papers. I've held them up, we pass them around and they're like, oh, wow, okay, I can do that if I do it the way Ms. Donna tells me and the way she teaches me. And then by the uh, sixth or eighth week, they are doing it beautifully themselves. So I do want you to know that your students can do it. All right, so let's go back to the lesson itself. Wait a minute, on the checklist challenge, uh, the colorful one, you can see how all of the tasks are, you know, like three or four tasks per page, okay? And 
um, the whole checklist challenge chart can be four, five, six, seven, eight pages long, right? With three or four tasks on each page. So you can see here that there's a task at the top on the right hand side using a thesaurus, if needed, change one word to a more advanced or distinct word. And then the check boxes are on the left. And then you go down and there's another task, check box on the left. You go down and there's another task, check box on the left. So that is what a complete checklist challenge altogether looks like. And that is what follows 95% of all the projects in all of my books, all of my writing projects, all of my writing uh, products at Teachers Pay Teachers, as well as at my own store, as well as my um, bigger products for homeschoolers. So um, that's what it looks like all together. Now, in this lesson, in all of the tools and tricks lesson, it has every checklist challenge task laid out on one page. So that's one task. That's another task. That's another task. And it is taught. So that is why I always recommend that uh, people who are using Meaningful Composition do one of the first semester books because it has this lesson in it, a lesson like this. Um, or if you're gonna use Write for a Month, do a Tools and Tricks book first. And um, that way you are ready for any other books and any other projects and any other products in all of my lines. All right, so they are given this paper to do their checklist challenge on. They can use their own paper from the first half of the book if they would like, um, or they can use this paper that's given to them. Uh, I like to not give them too many new skills all at the same time. So um, I would just have them use the one that's given here probably to do the checklist challenge on. Another thing that's really beautiful about this paper that's given to them is that if you're teaching a class of students, everybody has the exact same paper. So you can say, which verb should we change here? Where should we add a describer? Where should we add a sentence opener? And they all have the exact same paper. So definitely if you're teaching a classroom or a small group, use the paper that's given to them. Okay, so it is three paragraphs long and the checklist challenge boxes are three, three checklist challenge boxes. So this week I'm gonna go through, maybe not exactly half of the checklist challenge and next week I will go through the second half or more next week. All right, so here we go. The first task is in a box at the top and it says, read your composition to your teacher or an older sibling. Together, listen for sentences that sound unclear be sure to read aloud. You will hear errors you would otherwise not find. Place a check mark at each CC, checklist challenge, box with a pen or pencil when this step is complete. And then there are three boxes. For the boxes that match up with the paper, so if the paper's three paragraphs, three boxes. If the paper's five paragraphs, five boxes. For those tasks, they are supposed to do each task one time per paragraph. So they're supposed to read one paragraph, check it off once they've listened for errors and, and corrected anything. And second paragraph and third paragraph. All right. And um, then they move to the next task. The next task, there's only one box because they're just going to do this one time. Check every sentence in one paragraph. So they're just going to do this task for one paragraph to make sure that each one is a complete sentence, Ks. I have some new um, tricky tricks to help it stick posters coming out at Teachers Pay Teachers and Caves is the first one that's in that line. Um, it's a Caves, there are Caves posters. Capital at the beginning, all makes sense, verb, end mark, and subject, okay? So they're going to use that acronym, Caves, to check one paragraph. And then they are going to um, place a check marks in that box when it's completed, when they've checked each sentence. This is just really good practice for levels one and two, which are second and third and fourth and fifth, and sometimes on in a, into sixth. Um, and actually, sometimes it's good for high schoolers to check their sentences because a lot of times um, high schoolers can still get in that rut of using fragments or using subordinate clauses in place of sentences. 
So this is just a good task all the time. All right, so now they're going to check to make sure their paragraph has all five parts of a paragraph. So the previous one was all five parts of a sentence, Ks. This one is all five parts of a paragraph, Octi. Opening sentence, closing sentence, content is all the same, topic, three or more sentences, and indented. And there's some teaching about that and also the exception of dialogue. So they don't have to have three sentences or more in a paragraph when it is a dialogue paragraph. So then they check the box once they have checked for Octi in one paragraph. All right, now we're going to get to the repeating types of tasks. These are tasks that the students do over and over again, and um, they will code them too. So this has three boxes because they're going to do it once per paragraph. And then there's teaching on it at the bottom if they need more help um, in understanding how to find their verbs. So it says circle each verb with a light colored highlighter, underline circle, I mean underline highlight and so forth. And because there are too many verbs. So if they go through and they highlight all their verbs in like a, you know, fairly dark blue or even just a light colored green or something, they're going to have, you know, three per sentence, sentence highlighted. And it gets really confusing to them as to did I add that? So for this one, we want them to circle every one of their verbs that they can find with the light colored highlighter. Now, this is uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, finding verbs is an outstanding practice. It is um, really the hallmark of a writer, a good writer, to be able to find verbs, tweak them, change them, make them stronger, know what kind of verb you need, make sure your uh, subject verb agreement is in place. Uh, make sure your tenses are, you know, you, that if you started in the past tense, you continue in the past tense. And then also it makes it easier once their verbs are circled to change verbs, get a stronger verb, as you'll see in the next task, or to add adverbs. Because generally speaking, um, you know, 75% of all adverbs go with a verb, right? Um, they could add adverbs that describe other adverbs or adverbs that describe adjectives. But usually, um, especially at this level, especially your second, third, fourth, fifth grades, um, they are going to just find their action verb and then they're gonna tell how they do it. They're gonna add an adverb that way. So, and then they're supposed to code their CC boxes. All right, now there is some instruction down at the bottom. They're supposed to find all three kinds of verbs, action verbs, showing what the subject does, what action the subject is taking, be helper link verbs, which are all being, helping, and linking verbs, and infinitive. So anytime they see two plus a verb. So this can be two plus an action or two plus a BHL. Now, <clears throat> in case they do not know being, helping, and linking verbs very well, they can use the be a helper link verb song, which will also be at the Tricky Trick posters. So you can see how those posters would come in handy anytime you are doing writing projects. The Be Helper Leak Verb song is going to be a part of the Tricky Trick poster set as well. Okay, so I'm going to take you back to look at the sample that Zach did. All right, so there you can see in the chart, he circled each verb with kind of a purplish color, and there they are. So in the first paragraph, he circled had, make, cut, fell, saw, which he changed to spotted, looked, which he changed to inspected, found, which he changed to discovered, made, which he changed to fabricated, uh, was, sold, um, bought. All right, and then he did the exact same thing to his chart. So if I say one thing dozens of times during this lesson, it is Whatever you do to your paper, you have to do to your chart. Whatever you do to your paper, you have to do to your chart. I mean, oh, wow, maybe even 100 times in one checklist challenge lesson. <laughs> so look, he has circled all the purple, all of his verbs in purple, just like he did in the paper. And then did the second paragraph, found, went, 
selling, um, wanted to learn, was helping. I always tell students that they can do the two plus the verb or just the verb with the two, either way, because um, one of the ways we teach that, one of the first things we teach is prepositional phrases. So we want them to know right off the bat that two plus a verb is not a prepositional phrase. So they can circle to learn together if they want. And then they go back and code the second paragraph. And then they do the same thing to the third and they code the third paragraph. All right, so again, if you are sitting here thinking, my kids don't know verbs, this is a great place to start because repetition breeds success, right? And so as they circle verbs time after time after time, they are going to be able to find more and more and more of their verbs. Now, they do not get a bad grade on circling the verb task if they skip some verbs accidentally, or if they miss some verbs. I tell them it is not an assignment to see how many verbs you can find. It is an assignment for you to find as many as you can. And so, and they know um, Zach, who is my assistant writer, is also uh, one of the editors for the class papers. And so they know that Zach knows if they are just randomly circling a few verbs and just missing tons and they're not really trying, or if they've circled as many as they could find, but they just overlooked some, right? There's a big difference between the two. And so um, they know that he's onto them. <laughs> um, just because you can tell if they've only, you suppose they didn't highlight any BHLs. Well, then they did not put the song beside them in the chart, which is right there and find their BHL verbs, right? Or if they just, you know, highlighted five and their, their paragraph has 20 verbs in it, then that would be um, incomplete and they would get a poor score on that. All right, so now the next task is to change one of the boring verbs each in each paragraph to a strong verb. So I said this verb task is going to help them, right? Be able to find their boring verbs and change them later. Okay, so three tasks, three paragraphs, three boxes. Right now, all of the checklist challenge tasks, even in the chart that's all put together for them, has samples. You know, I'm big on samples, right? Samples are my jam. So they can see right there, instead of found, use discovered. Instead of looking, use appearing. Instead of run, use sprint. So it gives them some ideas of what to do for those boring verbs. All right, so I'm gonna go back and show you how Zach has done this. So this is change one of the boring verbs in each paragraph to a strong verb. It looks like he highlighted them in pink. So you can see in the first paragraph, he has changed saw to spotted and it's pink. Spotted is highlighted in, in pink. In the second paragraph, he has changed went to continued and it is highlighted in pink. So you can see how this is just phenomenal for a grader, right? To be able to see if the tasks are done completely. And then last paragraph is entered. He changed came to entered. And you can tell because again, those are highlighted in pink and whatever they do to the chart, they do to their paper. So if they circle the box, they circle it in their paper. If they highlight a box, they highlight it in their paper. If they underline a box, they underline it in their paper. And that is what color coding is all about. All right, a couple more tasks, and then we will pick this up next week where we left off. So the next one is about adding adverbs, okay? And there's a little lesson with each task in this how-to. So all of the tools and tricks books have these little mini lessons underneath each task. And so it's a great way to introduce them. You can even like get the tools and tricks one. And do, even if you have like junior high kids, get the tools and tricks one and do, you know, a very small, very easy checklist challenge with them. And then go to get tools and tricks two and do a harder one with them. And they will really, really learn the checklist challenge inside and out and backwards and forwards when you do the tools and tricks books or any of the meaningful composition first semester books. Okay, so again, there are examples, 
right? And they're mostly LY words. And at this level, you know, a lot of times they are using the LY words. Um, there are some non-LY, like never, seldom, later. Um, but usually in, you know, second, third, fourth, and even on up into fifth grade, a lot of times they have in their heads that an adverb is an LY word, right? So let's go see how that was added to the sample. This is why you need your um, uh, teacher's notebook sheets <laughs> for this particular episode, uh, especially. Okay, so here we are. Adverbs are circled in green in the checklist challenge chart. And here we go. And let me see. He has happily bought in the first one. He has secretly helping in the second one. And he has quickly made new clothes and shoes for them. All right, let's do a couple more. Um, next is adjectives. And um, again, there are samples. And the beauty of having the samples, uh, besides to not frustrate students who are trying to learn so many new skills at one time, uh, the other thing is that these, if they choose one of these, suppose they chose lengthy from this list or trusted or stringent or significant, it's not going to fit where an adverb goes, right? You're not going to say he um, uh, um, uh, trusted went, right? So if they choose one from the sample box, it's going to fit right before a noun or between a noun and a possessive or something like that. But it's going to fit with the noun. So they will put it in the right place. <laughs> See what I'm saying? They will not, they'll, if they use one from the box, they will put it in the right place. Um, also, you know, there are uh, adjectives that are LY, like um, um, lovely, um, kindly, uh, kindly gentleman. Um, there are, I don't know, probably over a hundred. Um, adjectives that are LY words, but for the most part at this level, they will just say, okay, I need an LY word for the adverb one and a non-LY describer for this one. All right, and um, I guess I should have another little plug for um, my parts of speech posters, eight parts of speech posters. So like the noun marker article posters, I think there are 12 in that set. Great for whenever you are teaching the eight parts of speech, including um, adjectives, adverbs, so forth. All right, so they're going to put a title at the top and there's only one box because they're only going to do that one time. And we give them sample ideas, something catchy, secret service, something comical, super sharing story, something bold, nighttime visitors, a song title or line, thankful for you, something from the Bible or some other spiritual teaching, be kind one to another. Something about character, be kind and thankful. And so they are going to come down back here with their um, chart and they're going to see, they're supposed to add a title. He's underlined that in yellow. It's hard to see on my screen, but I can see at the top that he has a midnight shoemaking service. And he's underlined that in yellow so it matches his box. All right, I am going to stop here um, because it has been long enough. <laughs> and next week we will pick up with the banned words list, um, thesis statement, thesis statement reloaded, and, um, this, and the other ones that are from the second part. Uh, which are sentence openers and coordinating conjunctions and compound sentences and so forth, depending on the student's level. Thank you so much for joining me in this How I Teach. Flip to the back of your teacher's notebook. You can find out how to get them all again. You can find out how to get free products that are related to this episode, including another, a different how to complete the checklist challenge uh, product. And all of these freebies have videos of me teaching your students. So you can grab these freebies with the video, uh, videos that go with each one that have me teaching your students. So you can take the week off, or if you use five of the freebies, you can take five weeks off. How about that? And then here are other downloadable products that are related to this episode where you can find them, which books, 
that you can find them in. And then of course, the meaningful composition books that you can find them in. I'd love to teach your students online or in person, uh, Character Inc. Cottage classes. Uh, online, you can see there how you can find us, languageartsladyblog.com forward slash create a class. If you are looking for a teacher for your, um, for your co-op or your small group. So uh, hit me up. In the meantime, I'll keep on teaching you here every week at How I Teach. Thanks a lot for joining me.